I would like to speak about Pearson correlation coefficient. If you look at this data at the scatter plot, we can see very interesting configurations. And let's analyze the pictures together with the numbers r equal to some number. And let's try to draw some conclusions. What do the axes represent? The first axis represents some variable, say, x, and the second represents variable y. So we have a number of observations. Each dot represents an observation, and each observation is given in two dimensions. First, some value on x and some value on y. For example, the first variable could be age, the second variable could be, for example, height of a person. Okay, so in the first picture on the left top, uh, we can see that the bigger the number of years, the higher the man. And this is a very strong positive relation. In this case, we say high positive correlation. Now, r equals 0, 0,9. Uh, let's see what, if we shift to the right. We have r equal minus 0, 0,8. And in this case, dependence goes the other way around. The bigger the value of x, the smaller is the value of y. Let's have a look at the third picture. Now, again, we have positive dependence, the bigger x, the uh, bigger y, but r equals 0, 7. If you compare first and third picture, then you can see there is more scattering of the points in this case. Next thing is minus 0, 6. So we, ha we can see negative dependence and bigger scattering. 0, 5 is right in the middle, is practically uh, we are arriving at nearly no dependence. Minus 0, 4 is like hmm, almost anything. Let's go down with the numbers. Look at the picture on the uh, right bottom. Now r equals 0, 1. So it's very, very close to 0. And the dependence is, well, it's really hard to say that there is any dependence at all. So, the Pearson's linear correlation coefficient is a coefficient determining the level of linear relationship between random variables. And again, if you have r equal to 1, all the data are gathered on a line. If you go down, the dependence is still very, very well seen, but the, the points don't keep to the line so tightly. Now, next we have low positive correlation, so we have more and more scattering, and no correlation at all is just scattering the data in all possible directions. Okay, what we have to remember is that the correlation coefficient is always a number between minus 1 and 1, and if r is greater than 0, 8, then we say that uh, variables x and y are very strongly positively correlated. If r is between 0, 4 and 0, 8, we have strong positive correlation. If between 0, 2 and 0, 4, we can say we have weak positive correlation. If we have the value of r between minus 0, 2 and plus 0, 2, we practically have no correlation at all. We say that the variables are not correlated and we have just a picture like in the middle of, of this row. If r is less than minus 0, 0,8, then we have very, very strong negative correlation. And similarly to positive between minus 0, 0,8 and minus 0, 0,4, we have strong negative correlation, and between minus 0, 0,4 and minus 0, 0,2, a weak negative correlation. Now, let's observe the situations when the correlation coefficient equals to zero. Well, we have already said that we can have kind of starry night, <laughs> as you can see in the top, in the picture. But there could be another configuration of this situation. 
What is the correlation coefficient? It is practically searching for the situation when the data is ordered on a line, on a straight line. But what if the data is ordered, but in a different way? For example, on the left you have a kind of sinusoidal combination, sinusoidal ordering. In the very top bottom you have very interesting configuration, the so-called U-shape, U-dependence. It's a very interesting dependence, although the correlation coefficient will tell us they are not correlated data. So what is the U-shape? You can imagine, for example, a situation that we consider um, age of people and the liking of conversation liking of conversation, of level of liking of conversation. So you can obtain kind of U-shape uh, because young people like to talk very much, uh, especially children. They always ask for something, ask about it. They are curious. They, they are ready to ask you 100 questions a day and, uh, and they are listening eagerly to your answer. The same we can be said about the elderly people who really like to speak. Um, this liking should come also from the fact that, that, that many in many cases they really don't have much opportunity to speak. So they are hungry for conversation. That's why they estimate it so high. And in the middle we might have the so-called middle-aged people who are very busy running, making money, living, <laughs> and, uh, well, they sing, well, of, of course they speak a lot, but uh, they are not craving it that much. Okay, y you can also have other configurations, like the sixth is very interesting, it's a circle, the circle which is fully empty in the, mi in the middle, that would mean that we have no observations of middle value of X and middle value of Y. That's, that's very interesting, like extremist population. Okay, now how do we calculate the estimator of linear correlation coefficient for discrete variables? So, of course, we, we have some dependence in the population, but we can estimate it based on the, on a sample. The formula is quite tricky and de denotes the number of observations x dash y dash mean the means of uh, the variable x in the sample and y of variable y in the sample. And x i y i are the observation values from the sample. In general, uh, the correlation coefficient is the product of the covariance of the x and y variables divided by the product of the standard deviations. Now, calculation, the estimator of linear correlation coefficient for discrete random variables is the following. Again, we are dividing covariance by standard uh, the product of the standard deviations, and it can be expressed in the following form. Now, a very important thing uh, which should be said is that correlation is not the same as causation. It is the common mistake to assume that two variables, even strongly co correlated with another, it is the cause, is its cause. And yet, the sound of the station clock striking the first hour is extremely strongly correlated with the departure of the train at 1 a.m. from the station. But it is not a cause of traffic, and vice versa. The departure of a train is not the cause of sound. In this case, we are only dealing with the coexistence of phenomena not the cause and effect relationship. If a factor A, for example, education, and factor B, for example, earnings, correlated with one another, then at least 
a few hypotheses about a possible causal relationship between them should be created. So, suppose factor A, like education, and factor B, like earnings, correlate with each other. There should be at least a few hypotheses about a possible causal relationship between them. First, factor A influences factor B, means education influences earnings. The relationship between earnings and education was found because higher education means that a person earns more. Now, next possibility is that factor B influences factor A. Here, wealthy people have better access to education and therefore there is a link between earnings and education. Third possibility. At the same time, A influences B and B influences A. Here, on one hand, wealthy people have better access to education, but on the other hand, better educated people have better earnings. Now, there is also a possibility that there is a factor C unidentified in the study that correlates with both A and B. Here, where the place of residence or ambition can be a factor that on one hand causes someone to earn more and on the other hand that he has a university degree. So that could be the environment in which you live. If you live in, a, in an environment of very ambitious people and well-educated people, you identify with them and this makes you both study harder and then earn more. That, could, that is the third factor which is not included in the study. And this might be influencing both of these variables. Anyway, correlation does not prove any causal relationship. Among statisticians, an anecdote is given as an example that a statistically significant positive relationship was detected between a number of storks per square kilometer and the given human population and the natural increase in this area. Of course, this does not prove the storks bring children. In the countryside, there is a, an average, a larger birth rate, and sometimes storks live there. The growth in the city is smaller and there are no stork. In existence of the third variable, town, village, correlated with both the number of storks and natural increase causes the dependence of those two variables. That's the third variable, town or village. They are probably not the results of serious research, but only a legend, but it is a good illustration of how dependency can arise, which is not a cause and effect relationship. Similarly, one could see a strong positive correlation between the population growth in India and the number of cars in Poland, although this is only a purely statistical correlation. Coexistence of phenomena not only and not any cause and effect relationship. Another example is the correlation between the number of deaths for homeless people in India and the level of ice cream consumptions in the United States. Here, the third variable is the average summer temperature in the northern hemisphere. It is increase, its increase causes more deaths due to heat and, of course, increased ice cream consumption.